Hey, how's it going guys? So we're back with another Star Wars reaction video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This one is called 10 Clone Trooper Units That Were Completely Wiped Out. So I'm really excited. I mean, well, I'm also interested to see like uh, which units were wiped out. But judging by like what I see on the thumbnail, I can see um, the 332nd, uh, which was um, like pretty much a new detachment from the 501st. If you guys saw the end of uh, Season 7 of the Clone Wars, you'll see what I'm talking about. And also... Um, it looks like the course on guard. I never knew that. Well, either way, uh, let's check out what uh, which 10 units were completely wiped out. The Clone Wars came with no guarantee. No assurance that a clone trooper would live to fight another day. Oftentimes, their deployments meant facing off against a larger enemy force or holding out on a harsh planet. It wasn't as glorious as you may think. Plenty of clones lost their lives on the front lines, uh, sometimes alongside their entire squad. I forgot, uh, uh, I think it's Hardcase. He was on the Embaran. Today we're going over 10 clone trooper units that were completely wiped out. The 104th Battalion. Led by Jedi General Plo Koon and Clone Commander Wolf, the 104th Battalion, or Wolf Pack, wore armor with maroon markings. They were one of the most recognizable units within the Grand Army of the Republic and fought in many campaigns, such as the Battle of Abragado, as numerous Republic fleets were destroyed by a new Separatist superweapon, the Malevolence, Plo Koon and the 104th, aboard the Venator-class Star Destroyer Triumphant, were sent to hunt down the then-unknown superweapon. Discovering the malevolence in the Abrogado system, the massive vessel fired its ion cannon at the Triumphant, disabling its power. The malevolence proceeded to open fire, destroying the entire fleet. Kuhn ordered his troops to get to the Republic escape pods before their ships were obliterated. The Separatists then sent hunters to search and Damn. destroy for their remaining escape pods, killing any survivors to keep the malevolence's capabilities a secret. The this was like episode two or three on the first season. The fleet were Commander Wolf, Sergeant Sinker, and Boost. With so many of the battalion's clones lost during the Battle of Abragado, clone troopers of the 104th later changed to a color scheme of Flink Grey as a way to honor their brothers lost during the malevolence campaign. The unit's numbers would be replenished with additional clone troopers, and continued to be one of the Republic's very best. The Battle of Jabim. The okay. Republic intervened in a civil war raging on the planet of Jabim, wishing to preserve its vital economic interests in Jabimi mining, while the Separatists backed an anti-Republic Jabimi faction with arms and battle droids. Republic forces initially made significant gains, but they overextended their limited resources. The CIS, led by Asajj Ventress and the Jabim natives, this, Alto Stratus, Yeah, the system does sound familiar. Hand, even capturing our <clears throat> Trooper Alpha-17 and Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was presumed dead after an explosion. Clone forces were generally unprepared for the atrocious conditions on Jabim, their new heavy AT-AT walkers stuck in the unforgiving muddy plains. Meanwhile, they already had AT-ATs? I didn't know that. The environment that they were familiar with. The presumed casualties on Jabim included over 9,000 clone troopers. Wow. That's the equivalent of an entire clone trooper legion on top of 27 Jedi and 5,000 or half of the allied Jabim forces. Anakin Skywalker, That's one hell of a loss. between loyalty and orders, was forced to make the difficult choice to evacuate, abandoning Jabim and its people, Mag's snow troopers. In the Clone Wars Cold Snap webcomic, Cold Assault clone troopers under Captain Meg were deployed on the icy world of Orto Plutonia, where they were tasked with testing Sub-Zero gear such as the CK-6 swoop bike. This was a hellish assignment, not only were they stuck on a tundra planet, but the clones couldn't enjoy a warm meal, their food rations were not shipped in insulated canisters, and the low temperature froze them solid. The troopers had to boil their Damn. food, taking away what little flavor the rations had to start with. The squad did not come across any Separatist battle droids, but stayed in fighting shape by building snowmen and using them for target practice. Things oh, that's funny. Things got worse when the squad started to encounter a very dangerous <clears throat> and mysterious species that they nicknamed the Icemen. These were, of course, the native species known as the Tulls. The final members of the squad, Commander Mag and Shiv, were killed at their camp when their speeders froze up. Another force of Cold Assault troopers were sent to investigate, led by Anakin Skywalker. Oh, so it was part of this episode. Rex. 
they discovered both the Republic and a separatist outpost whose personnel had all been I didn't know it was them. Trauma's ARF troopers. Commander Trauma led a group of ARF troopers who wore lighter armor for stealth and speed and often rode AT-RT walkers into battle. Trauma served in a unit under the command of Jedi Master Halsey and his Padawan Nox. When the Edit Jedi Temple oh, was attacked by killed the Separatist by Savage. Army on the planet Deveron, Trauma and his troops engaged the battle droids outside the temple's main entrance. During the battle, however, Count Dooku's newly anointed Sith apprentice, Savage Opress, would undergo his first field test. He entered Devron's atmosphere at the behest of his master, joining in the battle and pushing his way past numerous battle droids. He took a single shot from one of Trauma's men, before beginning a slaughter of the temple's defenders with his spear. Trauma proceeded to charge at Opress, and came to a crouched stop in front of the warrior. He attempted to fire his blaster, but was killed, simultaneously stabbed, and launched into the air by Opress's spear. After Trauma's death, Savage went on to murder both Halsey and Nox with relative ease. After the this master, is a really the cloak cool commanders episode of Delta too. Squad retrieved the bodies of the two Jedi on Devron and transported them to the temple on Coruscant. Keeley's Unit Captain Keeley served under the command of Jedi General Ima Gundai, Great foreshadowing there. I During know. The the, uh, campaign, everyone made fun of his name for that. <laughs> with the Twi'lek resistance leader, Cham Syndulla, though they were in desperate need of aid and reinforcements. Buying time for the Twi'lek uh, to retreat, Keeley's unit fought with General Dai to the... If you guys hear that leaf man. blower in the background, the I'm really was sorry. severely outnumbered and completely wiped out, with Keeley and Dai both dying in a final stand just as Republic supply ships arrived for the Twi'leks, the 182nd Legion. The 182nd Legion are a group of clone troopers who were actually wiped out twice. Let me explain. The first time the 182nd appeared was twice. in the 2005 Star Wars Battlefront II Rise of the Empire campaign. The 182nd Legion was deployed to the Separatist-held world of Felucia, one of several key targets in the Republic's campaign to reconquer the Outer Rim territories. The Legion successfully landed on the planet, but were soon cut off from communications with the Republic. Isolated and unheard from for a month, reinforcements from the 501st Legion were sent to fulfill the 182nd's objectives. Yet, the oh, okay. 501st also endured many hardships in navigating through a hazardous terrain filled with hostile acclays, flesh-eating bacteria, and many other obstacles that made Felucia extremely difficult to subjugate. Under the leadership of Jedi General Aayla Sakura, the 501st ultimately survived their ordeal on Felucia, but discovered that the 182nd had been all but wiped out. We again learn of a group of yep. clones belonging to the 182nd in a trooper's tale from the Clone Wars comic 6.8. This squad from the 182nd oh. was deployed to the planet Belgaroth, on a reconnaissance mission, which only their commanding officer, Sergeant Great Camino, barely survived and completed. Thorne's Shock Troopers Commander Thorne and a garrison of shock troopers accompanied Senator Padme Amidala for negotiations on the Banking Clan's world of Scipio, home of the corporation's vaults. However, this was a setup by Count Dooku, as Separatist forces soon invaded and Hyena-class bombers attacked Thorne's position before... In my opinion, Commander Thorne had one of the most badass last stands ever. Dropped in. With the clone troopers surrounded and fighting to the end, Thorne, as the last of his troopers, yelled out one final for the Republic, but was soon killed after taking multiple blaster shots to the chest. He and his men fought valiantly yep. until the very end. Phil's squad... Jedi General Kit Fisto and his former Thorn was a badass. Feb, were dispatched to track down Viceroy Newt Gunray after he escaped the Venator class Star Destroyer Endurance. Meeting on Vasic 3, Fisto and Veb, along with Clone Commander Phil and his squad, moved into a fortress where they believed a homing beacon was. Little did they know this was actually the lair of General Grievous. Once Grievous arrived, the clones unfortunately started dropping like flies. Two were killed by Grievous himself in the initial encounter, another fell into the incinerator trap door, and the two left to guard the shuttle, named Bell and Niner, were killed when Magna Guards blew the ship up. That left Phil alone with the Jedi, but he was ultimately slain by Grievous's pet Rogwart named Gore, slammed to the ground by the beast's yeah. tail. The 332nd Company. Here we go. Katan Kreese and former Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano requested the help of Republic forces to retake Mandalore from former Sith Lord Maul's Shadow Collective. The 332nd Company was formed within the 501st Legion. 
Adorned with orange paint to match their unofficial general, the 332nd helped Ahsoka to capture Maul. However, Order 66 was soon enacted, and the clones were forced to turn on Ahsoka. When Ahsoka and Rex reached the main hangar, a formation of the remaining clone troopers was waiting for them, led by the ARC trooper Jesse. But the ship had been sabotaged by Maul, with Rex and Ahsoka barely able to escape in a Y-Wing. But the remaining clones on board were all killed when the ship crashed on the surface of a nearby moon. Rex and Tano visited the crash site and buried the clone troopers they could find. Rest the in peace. The 13th Battalion. If we had a nickel for every time a Jedi escaped Order 66, while their entire unit was wiped out on a sabotaged Venator, we would have two nickels, which is not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. The 13th Battalion, oh, yeah, that's right. Jedi General Jaro Tapal, and it's in Padawan Jedi Fallen Order, Pestis, if you guys are wondering. Were also known as the Iron Battalion due to the resilience they showed in conflict. The 13th Battalion participated in the Bracca invasion and were preparing to head to Maigido when Order 66 was issued. General Tapal was able to sabotage their Republic cruiser, but was still fatally shot by the clone troopers. Kestis survived and departed for Bracca aboard an escape pod when the ship exploded killing the entirety of the 13th Battalion. But which of these wiped out clone units is your favorite? Did we miss any on our list? Let me know in the comments. All right, there you guys have it. So that was 10 clone trooper units that were completely wiped out. And um, what I find really interesting is they weren't like in the comics or anything like that. They were all shown in uh, the Clone Wars episode, except for I think the second one where... Um, uh, it showed like just a con of on the one on Jabim. I don't think they were shown in a Clone Wars episode, but either way, every single one of them was seen. So that's why I was like, oh wait, it was in this episode. It was in this episode. It was in this episode. So that's why I was going like that, except for the last one because um, Cal Kestis's um, unit was not in the Clone Wars episode, but it was in the game Jedi Fallen Order. If you guys were wondering, so that's why I recognize so many of this and it actually like filled in the gaps in between because I know there's like so many clones and like so many units and so many legions that uh, like you really have to like get into comics or like a different type of uh, I don't want to say lore, but different type of like um, information uh, to like try to like gather uh, who they are and everything. But this one pretty much like filled in the gaps, like which units uh, they were and like uh, what the fate of them were. Like how the malevol uh, malevolence, I didn't know they wiped out completely, uh, completely wiped out that entire unit. And I didn't know um, also uh, Commander Thorne's unit was completely wiped out. I, was, I thought it was just a small detachment, but never mind. And also, like I said, Thorne had one of the most badass uh, last dance I've ever seen in uh, Star Wars. But besides that, um, I say, uh, in my opinion, the most tragic one was uh, the 332nd because they were just formed in if you saw if you saw in the last episode or what not last episode i mean the, the end of season seven they were just formed and they already did their paint job and they were under the command of ahsoka tano but barely just like one mission and then order 66 happened so i say the most tragic of them all was the 332nd in my opinion so comment down below which one which unit was your favorite or which one do you think has the most tragic end in my opinion like i said 332nd but anyways thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this episode if you watched all the way to the end thank you so much for that and also hit that notification bell so you know when i drop another episode and thank you so much for your support i really do appreciate it and until until then, I'll see you guys next time.